Welcome to Books in the World, produced by the Cape Cod Writers' Center and aired by Cape Cod Community Cable. My name is Kathy Tian. I'm a member of the Cape Cod Writers' Center. And through this program, we hope that we can explain to our viewers what authors, illustrators, editors, and publishers do as they try to create the books that we have. And for today's program, I would like to welcome Robin and James Miller, who have created a book called The Faithful Journey from Slavery to Presidency. And this book contains art, poetry, and history. So before we get into it, would you please, Robin, tell us a little bit about your history that led you to create this book? Sure. When I was growing up, uh, I grew up during the Civil Rights Movement. I'm the same age as Yolanda King. Um, and so in New York, I grew up in New York City. I'm a retired New York City teacher. But growing up as a child in New York, I watched the Civil Rights Movement happen on television. And I often asked God, why did you create African American, at the time, black people or colored people, um, to be so abused? Why did you have two races? And I really felt insecure. I did not want to be connected uh, when I found out that we came from African people. There was such negativity about Africa on television. At five years old, I was upset when a, a cousin said to me, you know, we come from African people, and I ran around screaming, I'm not African, I'm not African. So this journey that I've taken and named it the faithful journey has been a faithful one. It's been doing this work was about me looking into my black history, African American history, and trying to understand who we are as a people and what makes us special, what did we go through, and I've learned so much. In some of my poems, I write as well as I'm an artist, and so I do quilt pieces. I call my pieces quilts, even though they're mixed media collages, because I want to honor African American women. The slaves, enslaved women, created quilts. I don't like to sew, so, but I love working with paper and other materials, so that's what I do, and I use the composition of a quilt and tell, my quilts are narrative quilts. Mm -hmm. So they tell the history and the story. And that's what I like to present in my work. Um, this work, I call it, it's restoring my African soul. By doing this, I feel good, it's positive, and that's what led me to start doing the quilts. And then later the poetry came. Mm -hmm. And then we decided to make it into a book. Well, thank you, and I, I know later we're going to ask Jim to read Restoring My yes. African American Soul, but first can we hear a little bit of your history, Jim? Well, my background <clears throat> basically is uh, I've been in banking uh, about 32 years. I'm now retired from that. I uh, did investigations at the time. Uh, on my spare time, I did a lot of writing of poetry, and I've always written to entertain myself. And it really wasn't until uh, just getting into this retirement, uh, uh, my partner, <laughs> my life's partner here, decided to get me to bring my poetry from my personal world into the public. Mm -hmm. um, it was quite a transition, but the teacher wins out again. <laughs> um, but it, it allowed me to have a voice that mm -hmm. I really didn't have before, because I, as I said, I wrote for myself. Mm -hmm. And it's, it seemed to be received quite well by the public, and uh, it's a, just an interesting journey. Mm -hmm. And I love poetry myself, and poetry always makes me feel something. Some Absolutely. of your poems make me feel real angry because of what happened throughout history to African Americans. Mm. Some of it makes me enjoy the jazz, the rhythms, right. and some of it makes me very joyful. Mm. And um, just like other poems that I read the other day was The Cremation of Sam McGee mm. by Robert Service. I mean, you take a serious topic and then you make a funny poem about it. Sure. Sure. So we, I was thinking maybe you could read us that sample poem. Okay. Restoring yes, my African American soul. Restoring my African soul. Restoring my African soul. Yeah. Just, African soul. Um, just before he even gets started, um, 
what I, I, I found um, in my art, if you saw that picture, uh, mm -hmm. I try to create images that are cheerful, even in slavery, even in pain. When I say cheerful, the colors are bright, they're vibrant. Mm -hmm. um, I yeah. don't want to feel sad when I look at the imagery. Um, but what I realized as I started doing this work, I said, this is restoring my African soul. And I asked him to select, I selected a few pieces for him to do. I had no clue what I wanted to write for this. So he <laughs> wrote this poem and I was delighted with it. Well, I'm delighted to be able to listen to it because I've read it, but so okay. please. Restoring my African soul. Kidnap, separated from my ancestral motherland, shackled, chained, displayed, subservient to humanity, umbilical cord to my African soul, broken, slave for a price, boats pulled out to sea. On the other side of prayer and faith lie the heavens and divinity. Shackles and chains removed, a majestic hand ended slavery. Still, world forces test the strength of my feeding bowl to conquer the battle for the victory. I call on God to restore my African soul. Thank Beautiful. you. Beautiful. Thank you very much. It's um, just absolutely the heart and the soul coming out in your reading and your images and everything that has it's gone. It's from life experience that I can write poetry. I can't just sit down with a pen and just create something. It's it's a window that I have to walk through that I can then recreate in words mm -hmm. that I think fit what I experienced. And that's mm -hmm. how my poetry is created from inside out. Yes, and um, one of the poems at the beginning about the, the door to hell. The door of no return. Of no, return. of no return. And you talked about going to Africa and going to the slave castle, mm -hmm. which I didn't know anything about. Well, so I Googled it, and sure. you can tell well, what us I'll, about what it. What I'll tell you is that um, we took a trip, a global exposure ministry trip, with our church in New York, which is the African American Church. Uh, it happened to be, this is 2010, and this is our, that was our 30th wedding anniversary time. We put on African clothing, and stood on top of Elmina Castle and renewed our vows of 30 years. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty awesome and the experience was powerful and painful. Um, he ended up writing The Door of No Return. He also wrote one called um, From Capture to Chat Hell, mm -hmm. saying from capture to chattel and being hell. Um, I wrote something, Middle, car, uh, middle Passage Cargo, so we really mm -hmm. were moved by our experiences oh, yeah. in Africa. And I have to say that this book wouldn't be what it is mm -hmm. if we had not gone on that trip to Africa. Yeah. How one moment in time yes. makes other things happen. Absolutely. Yes. And because I didn't know, I got to watch a YouTube program of CNN with a man returning to the slave castle yes. because he was yes. African American and what it was like for him to walk through mm -hmm. the chambers and to learn of the torture and yes. the horrors yes. oh, yeah. that people went through after walking for four months sometimes just to That's get right. there. That's right. And then from that hell Absolutely. to the boat, which was right. another hell, and then right. over to here. And um, so it is amazing, and I'm so happy that you did write this book. And the third part goes into the history of African Americans, and you have your illustrations with it that aren't so much the quilts, but separate illustrations, oh, and absolutely. going through each episode. So yes. can you tell us a little sure. bit? Sure, well about let me tell you the structure of the book. Mm -hmm. The book starts off with the quilts and the poems, and they go from slavery mm -hmm. to presidency, 
That was so awesome. When Obama became president, it was so powerful on so many levels. For me, as an artist who was doing African American history, what a to be able to go from slavery and then mm. get to presidency was so was awesome. Oh. So that's a poem. I also when we are at the Zion Union Heritage Museum mm -hmm. here on Cape Cod in Hyannis. Um, we meet with um, tour buses, and many African Americans come, and they're surprised that there is an African American museum. But this is one of we do the poetry, we tell the story, and it is wonderful and powerful. And I tell them that we use this book as a ministry here on the Cape to talk about race, to go to churches, but to speak mm -hmm. to people. So we have we've gone to white privilege conferences, and we use the book. Um, awesome. Part two of the book. So that's the first part is the poems. Mm -hmm and mm -hmm. the quilts. Part three, and part two, I was inspired by the famous African-American artist, Jacob Lawrence, who did the Great Migration series. And I love the rhythm in which he told the story. So I decided to think about that and use that um, mm -hmm. and create a rhythm. So in the storytelling, I go from slavery to presidency, but there's also statements and prayers to go with each painting because we are a faithful people. And so there was a prayer along the way. That's how mm -hmm. I know my family and all the stories I've heard of African Americans. We've always been praying mm -hmm. um, through it. Part three of the book talks about the, uh, my art, how I do the art, and explains some of the quilts that you may not know exactly what's going on in them mm -hmm. in the first part. And part four is my personal history along the African American journey, where I'm very proud to say that my great grandfather, Daniel Hendricks, his image is in the Smithsonian representing Masons, and my grandmother and one of her sisters represent Eastern stars. So they are in there, their photos are in the book, along with the picture of my, grand, my paternal grandmother and grandfather, that photo of them, yes. their wedding picture, in her wedding dress. The wedding dress is also with the Smithsonian and mm -hmm. that picture. The other, Wonderful. some other pictures in there um, go through telling um, how we went to Africa. They show pictures of us mm -hmm. um, doing our vows, um, uh, renewing our vows, and my, talk about my mother, the fact that I was born three days before uh, Rosa Parks sat on the bus, Ooh. you know, and so, um, you know, that story. So there's, I decided, in fact, uh, the person who helped me put this book together, Nancy Shoemaker, she um, is the person who looked at some of my photos and said, Robin, you've got to put that in your book. Mm -hmm. Show some of these images. So that's why part four is there because of Nancy. And I credit her Perfect. with helping me to make this book more interesting. Mm -hmm. And to me, your title, it's not just the journey, it's right. the faithful the journey. The faithful journey. And at the end of each segment of the history, you have words about, and we moved forward. We moved forward. Yep. They prayed for blah, 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 mm -hmm. and they moved forward. That was like, well, I really thought about Jacob Lawrence, and he said, the migrants kept on coming. And he had this rhythm for each part. He would tell about what was going on during the Great Migration. And then he said, and the migrants kept on coming. They kept mm -hmm. on coming. And so I thought about what we do as throughout our history has been praying. So we prayed and continued to move forward. Yes, and it's so necessary for not just African Americans, but for all of us true, to true. make it through life because we never know when we're going to be hit with a cancer, a death, something else that happens with um, addictions with our children. And our spirits are very important in our lives. They are. And to spiritual have life. that faith that you can continue and to see it in your book of how from the horrors of the beyond comprehension yes. to mm -hmm. um, come to President and Michelle Obama and the joy and the beauty of that whole episode of our country's sure. history. Sure. And, um, but to continue that hope on as we go and for everybody in all different areas. Well, there's a poem that I do in um, the museum and it's from the Great Migration and I hear my grandmother's voice and that one is one that gets people excited because um, when I did this poem, I wondered why did African Americans leave the South in droves to go to northern cities? And I hear the Negro spiritual, I've been buked 
<laughs> and I've been scorned. And then I stop right there. <laughs> okay, and, I, and the people laugh because I always go, okay, that's it. <laughs> and then I do the poem, um, heading north. Been so butte, been so scorned. Heading north shores, I was born. Ain't no jobs, ain't nothing fair. Bowl weevils, floods are everywhere. Want no part, no gym, no crow. Can't pick no cotton, not no more. Seen some folks are hanging, got me looking in the skies. Where you at, Lord Jesus? Can't you hear our mournful cries? Gotta get me a ticket, gotta get us on a train. Get my family to somewhere, somewhere that be sane. Been so butte, been so scorned. Heading north. Sure as I was born. And that's one that we do that really mm. speaks to the courage and the fortitude of the African American people. Mm -hmm. And all people. Yes, and all people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, this is true. Yeah. And, and when you were talking about Nancy helping you with the layout of the book, yes. you, are, you published this book yourself. So you did not have right a here on the cave. any publisher. Right? That's right. You went to right. a Barnstable. Uh, no, I went to uh, West Barnes, uh, West, wait, Nancy Shoemaker, okay. her, it's called West Barnstable, yeah. her press, and yeah. she is fabulous. She does a lot. She's a historian here on the Cape. Mm -hmm. And so um, right. she's helped me West, with yeah. this book and another book that I've done. And I like, I use her guidance. She's smart. She's quick. And um, we've been able to sell this book because of our presentations at the museum. So mm -hmm. uh, as busloads come in, in fact, since, um, let's see, uh, I just looked at it yesterday. We started in May with the season of buses. We've sold 864 of these books in that amount of time. Excellent. And we, in, you know, it's only some, some buses a week or whatever, mm -hmm. not that all the time, but it's been 800, 846 of these books. Wonderful. You know, so can people buy your book online? The best or way to do it stores? is to go to my website, your website. and they can okay. order from the website, yep, mm -hmm. www.robinjoycemillerart.com. Great, because so, I know people will want to Yes, be that's how you can get the this book. book. Yes. No, yes. And, and, and I love the way it has blossomed into a new chapter of your life. As Absolutely. You are spreading yeah. the word. We've and spoken bring... in churches. Um, we've done slideshow presentations with the art um, at different museums here so, on the Cape. So people so. can go to your website to get your contacts and yes. everything to oh, do absolutely. those kinds of Absolutely. Absolutely. So about what age group? I know it can go for... I, when I, as a teacher, I wrote it in mine, um, I started talking about some of these things in fourth grade. I mean, there are some children in third grade who could definitely handle, but I would say fourth grade to adults. Um, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an enjoyable book for adults, but certainly I wrote this so that children today can know something about their history, um, listening, looking at the poetry, Absolutely. hearing the story, understanding in simple sentences what mm -hmm. was going on and why um, Obama's presidency was so powerful. Um, the, the, be, our beginnings here in this country really make his presidency extremely proud, powerful. Sure and does. one of the poems, the other one, I'm not going to do it, but the one that I do, Obama, on um, the inauguration day, that one gets people excited because I try to capture the spirit of the day. Mm -hmm. And I go through the, the, the ceremony to a certain yeah. extent. There was the spirit and the feeling and yes. the love. It was incredible yes. just coming yes. out all over so the, the place. With the that. joy so. of the people when mm -hmm. we do this together, Obama, Obama, <laughs> a day to scream and shout, and then they get excited. And for African-American people, I look at the joy on their faces, and mm -hmm. that is that just brings it to me again and again and again. And they come and they go, thank you, thank you. So that's what makes Reception. doing this book fun, um, having that museum. People should come and visit the Zion Union Heritage Museum. There are mm -hmm. a lot of wonderful things going on there, and uh, Which is incredible wonderful. artists, yeah. yeah. And what's your next book or chapter going to be about? Well, right now, the museum is coming up with a book that mm. I started for them, but Nancy and John Reed, the president, took over and added a great deal to it. Wow. What I was noticing is that the, um, the people would come to our museum, especially 
African Americans and they don't really realize what's happening on the Cape and that there is an African American community and a Cape Verdean community here. So mm -hmm. the book really gives a history of people of color on the Cape. And so that book is going to be coming out soon. And Nancy's doing that and that'll be sold at the museum and who knows where it'll go from there. Excellent. Yeah, Jim, did you? I was just thinking about the, we were discussing the podcast or something you might Oh, consider. what I want to do, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I just always have new ideas. And so um, I, when I see how excited people are, African Americans, to see that there's something black on the Cape and they're black people, they know about Martha's Vineyard. A mm -hmm. lot of people, there's a wonderful African American community there. But I was thinking of doing something called Coming Black to Cape Cod, where I interview people and I get and start gathering the history. Ooh. Whether it becomes a book, I'm not sure, but it'll start off as like interviews. And so that's what I'm I thinking bet it about. It will become a book <laughs> right, because I think <laughs> everything that you think about and try it, it turns off happen. But it's the diversity that is so beautiful and Absolutely. makes life so much more interesting as we learn each other's cultures and music and art and what it all brings to our lives to yes, be able to yes. share and enjoy together but also to realize who we are as humans and what we need to work on for the future to make it better Absolutely. for everybody. Yes. Absolutely. So, yeah, so Jim, do you have anything you wanted to add well, about I just find that Cape Cod tends to be a, um, it just kind of nurtures the, the spirit to be more um, engaged in sharing. Yeah. I mean, I've lived in New York City all my life, and I find that uh, for the seven years that I've been here, uh, life has been so different. Um, you go from a New York Minute, uh, you go to a Cape Cod <laughs> Hour. Uh, here, you, you can run into folks that can go from kings and queens to uh, people in uh, just about every walk of life. But uh, they, they, the need for people, I think, is greater mm -hmm. when you have less. The, the abundance of people in the city, okay, you're so busy trying to get to one place to another, you're getting people out the way. Here, you kind of need people. Everybody comes together in harmony. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I was kind of surprised, even the NAACP, I found that organization to be half black and half white. It couldn't exist without the cooperation of everybody. So there's a real strong sense mm -hmm. of community here that I didn't get in the city. And I really, uh, it, it's a motivator for me. Yeah, because we pretty much are an island here oh, and absolutely. are separated from the mainland. And, you know, there's, there are bumper stickers to remind us, you, you know, you're not on the mainland anymore. So. Right get exactly. rid of the stress and right, right. the nerves and the, the anger and stuff so to to be here together and i think because so many people have come here for vacations and fallen in love with the place yes. so that has mixed it up and we're all thrilled to well learn we've been about embraced each other. Uh, it's important to say that we've been embraced by our neighbors none of them are african american We've been embraced by um, the church that we go to, West Parish of Barnstable. Um, they're the first people to put me in the pulpit and to have discussions oh, Reed about and, uh, Reed and Christy, Pastor Reed and Christy, um, Bur um, uh, Reed Bear and Christy Burns. They're wonderful and they've come to our home. Oh, so absolutely. we've yeah. really developed a community since we've been here between the museum, uh, the church, and that church has really helped us to expand to other UCC churches here and have that discussion. Um, no place for faith, uh, no place for um, hate. Falmouth, they did mm -hmm. something, and they had us as keynote speakers for the Martin Luther King breakfast um, at one point. So we've been doing interesting things, meeting and connecting with a lot of people. Oh, um, a diverse. Bunch. The lunch bunch is a group of African American uh, women of color who lunch <laughs> together to come together and meet. And um, but we have expanded into a community that is well mixed and has been very mm -hmm. um, accepting of us. And we've enjoyed it. We enjoy our lives here. Yeah, and, and the group, is it No Place for Hate? No Place for Hate, right. Falmouth. And there is going to be a No Place for Hate Barnstable, uh, I believe. Barnstable. Mm -hmm. I think they're up. coming up with something. So um, there's a lot of talk about um, diversity, about uh, just people coming together of all walks of life, of different sexual orientation. All of this is important, and I feel a heart here. Mm -hmm. that I love. 
And I There's think a, if more people join those groups or get involved with one little segment. I mean, if everybody does his or her Human part, relations. Yeah. Right, that, goes that we fly. can move forward for you know, security, economic blessings Growth. and everything. It's amazing. You know, I together, mean, we even ran into have to get active. Jung Ho Park was... Uh, oh, that's another thing. Yeah, Jung Ho Park. Um, mm. What's interesting that's coming favorites. up... The, well, Jung Ho Park called uh, <laughs> recently to get in touch with Jim because he would like him to um, be a, to participate in the uh, Passport to Africa, Africa. and where he'll Ooh. be reading possibly um, le excerpts from the Birmingham Martin Luther King's Birmingham letter. Yeah, letter. So there's nice. just like interesting Excellent. things, and possibly <laughs> I don't know if my poem will be. I wrote a poem. I'm an African. And so we've been meeting with the different arts groups, with different, uh, our lives are fantastic here. Well, thank you for doing all this. Yes. And thank you for telling us about your lives, your book, who knows where your future is going to bring you, but this has been wonderful. So thank, thank you. you for sharing. Thank you. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in today. And we know that this book has a lot to offer for all of our viewers. You can find it at Robin and Jim's website, which is www.robinjoycemillerart.com. Thank you.